Two-door luxury coupes. They're somewhat of a dying breed, but you already knew that. Every German luxury car maker still is trying to make at least one, and even two Japanese brands have been making it work for a little while now. But for the general mainstream public, they lost interest a while ago. With three offerings ranging from the large and bodacious $85,000 starting price 8 series down to the smaller but still seductive 4 series at forty six dollars to this, the $36,000 starting price 230i, BMW still has you covered if this is the body style you crave the most. This is the 230i with a 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder and rear-wheel drive, but like its 430i brethren, it wears the 30i uniform very nicely. For this generation, the 2 Series unfortunately lost its convertible variant, but it did gain a 4-door Grand Coupe sedan version a couple of years before this redesign came out. Aside from sharing an interior as well as the B48 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder, the 228i Grand Coupe and the 230i Coupe could not be more different. The Grand Coupe is front-wheel drive based like the BMW X1 and the Mini Cooper, so the engine sits side-saddled and is actually detuned down to 228 horsepower. This, however, sticks to the rear-wheel drive formula that began with its predecessor, the 1 Series, meaning we still have a long hood cab rearward proportion, as well as a very upright silhouette that's immediately recognizable as a 2 Series. However, for this generation, the car grew quite a bit. At 179 inches long, the 2 Series is now only 5 to 6 inches shorter than larger competitors like the 4 Series, the C-Class, the A5, RC, and Q60. But as we'll see later, interior volume is much closer to those models than you might think. I know Alex had some qualms with this newly designed door handle release that BMW is using, but for me, it looks and feels modern, and my hands have no problems opening or closing them. The wheels you see here are the $600 M double-spoke bi-color rims, riding on staggered width Pirelli P0 tires, 225 millimeters in the front, 255 in the back, and because we have the dynamic handling package, red M brake calipers. Design-wise, this 230i looks strikingly similar to the more powerful M240i, but that's because this model has the M Sport package on it, which gives you the larger triangular front air intakes in the fascia, the black shadow line trim, as well as the sportier wheel designs. And this is the look you'll get standard on all M240i models. If you want it on your 230i, that M Sport package costs $3,250. If you prefer this design over the standard Sportline's theme in the front, then you can save up to 10 grand over an M240i if you go this route. Now, I'm a fan of this front end design, which has full adaptive LED headlights, which are part of the premium package, and the grille has active shutters that open upon engine startup. Out back, we also have some full LED taillights. Now, if you've already seen Alex's first drive review of this car, you're probably experiencing some deja vu right about now because this car is actually very similarly specced to the one he drove in that video, so there might be some overlap here and there, just a heads up. Now, I might be in the minority for saying this, but I'm a big fan of this rear end design. I think the LED accents, the shape of them at least, look really good, and the overall rear design is a fresh and modern take on this car's familiar motif. Trunk capacity is a measly 10 cubic feet, but do keep in mind that this is essentially now the smallest two-door coupe on the market. For reference, the larger 4 Series can fit 12 cubic feet in its trunk. There is no spare tire on board, nor is there any way to expand cargo beneath the floor here. This doesn't even lift up. There are two cargo nets on the side, a repair kit, and various hooks around the interior. Under the hood of every 230i is this B48 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder, putting out 255 horsepower, 294 pound-feet of torque, mated to a ZF 8-speed automatic and rear-wheel drive. There is no more manual transmission on offer and no all-wheel drive either. Now, the M240i has 382 horsepower and is all-wheel drive only, but the 3 Series and the 4 Series, which have both of these variants, offer all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive in both. So there is still hope that BMW will bring those variants to this model lineup at some point, but we'll have to wait and see. For front seats that have no adjustable lumbar support, I am pretty comfortable in these seats. Now, most people would likely complain about the lack of lumbar support. As I said before, and I'll continue to say until you guys remember it, I don't really require much lumbar support from my back. Therefore, that adjustability is not something I necessarily miss too much. Now, do sit in one of these before you pull the trigger on the $1,450 Vernasca leather trim because that is the only way to get adjustable lumbar support in this car. Both seats are heated thanks to the premium package and they're eight-way power adjustable. Now, two of those ways are the extendable thigh cushion you see right here. And I've got a perfectly acceptable amount of headroom left here and the steering wheel is a manually adjusted affair. Despite the extra bulk on the outside, passenger space actually shrunk overall this generation, and that is most apparent back here. Headroom is tolerable for me at 5'9", but legroom is virtually non-existent. The person in the passenger seat would have to slide forward a good bit for me to be comfortable back here for long trips. Tall people, not a chance. 
Heading inside, up top here we have the piano black plastic covered command center with the controls for the power moonroof, as well as the SOS emergency services button right there at the top. This is a standard size moonroof, no panoramic moonroof or anything like that, but it does have a manual shade, which is great. This is the Canberra beige faux leather seat trim. It has height adjustable headrest as well as the height adjustable seat belts, as you can see right here. Over on the door panel, we have a mixture of colors, including the Canberra beige and black, with a mixture of materials ranging from the soft, you know, injection molded plastic to a harder plastic you'll find down here where the water bottle holder and mat pocket is. The speaker grills are not shiny or metal or anything like that, but the door handles have a nice solid metal feel to them. The dashboard over here is another soft injection molded plastic deal. We also have the black sort of gloss black trim right there with the silver accents. And then the glove box down below is pretty small, but you can fit a couple of items in there for sure. Now over to the center of the dashboard, we have the very familiar BMW interior design theme here, but there is a refreshed 2 Series coming very soon that will get the upgraded single curve display with iDrive 8. This is still iDrive 7, but we do have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as you can see right here. Then there's some cool features like built-in weather information. Uh, Park Mobile is built in, so you can pay for parking spots right from the screen. Amazon Alexa, of course. There's actually an M lap timer equipped in this car, so if you want to you know, track how, how fast you're driving your M Sport Design 230i, you can do that there. There's some pretty detailed fuel economy figures right here if you want that information. A G-Force meter right there. Going back to Android Auto really quickly, this is a system that actually takes advantage of the full widescreen aspect ratio, unlike Hyundai and Kia products that just give you a blank space over on the right. Here you can actually toggle between having a large screen for the main app you're currently using or having the map over on the right. You can control all of the systems with either the touchscreen or this rotary controller down here. So if you don't want to get the screen messy, you can do that. And sometimes actually I prefer doing that. Then down below we have climate control buttons, all physical buttons, which is great to see. Um, we've got heated seats here, but no ventilated seats. Then down below we have the volume knob and then a bunch of preset buttons that we see in most other modern BMWs. Moving on over to the steering wheel, we again have a very familiar situation here from other BMWs. It's very thick with leather padding that feels nice in the hand, and the airbag cover has a great looking stitching element to it on the edge there. Over on the left, we have controls for the cruise control system. And then down in the center on that third spoke, we have the button for the heated steering wheel. And then over on the right, of course, we have controls for your audio system. Then up above, we have the head-up display. It's not super big, but you can control a few audio functions from it. As you can see right here, I can go through the Sirius XM channels, among other inputs that you might be using, as you can see. There is a Qi wireless charge pad down here in the center console, but my Pixel 6 Pro was not able to fit in there. And even with the case off, I couldn't really get it to fit fully on the pad itself. Then we have two cup holders right there, as well as more piano black plastic surrounding the controls for auto start stop, the actual ignition button right there, the typical BMW shifter as you see right there, and then the controls for your drive mode, sport, comfort, and eco pro. Then again, there is the iDrive controller, which has touch controls on the top for you to just, you know, slide your finger around and navigate. And then the physical buttons up top. There is a strange blank plastic space right here. I don't know what else they could have put there, but it is sort of, odd. Then there's the electronic parking brake right there, and then the center console is not super deep, but it is enough space for, you know, a number of things you might want to put in there. The 230i is an excellent entry-level model for BMW. With the M Sport package we have on this one, it looks and feels like the more powerful M240i. Now, if you're willing to give up 100 or so horsepower and all-wheel drive, this experience will still satisfy you. Like the 3 Series and the 4 Series that this engine can also be equipped with, acceleration to 60 takes, according to BMW, 5.5 seconds. The standard 8-speed automatic is quick shifting, but does tend to suffer from inconsistent activation depending on what speed you're at when you hit the accelerator pedal. A combination of a little bit of turbo lag and a reluctancy to quickly downshift at times means you're sometimes put in some really awkward situations where the power just doesn't get to the ground quite as soon as you need it to. Once you're at speed though, it does do a better job at being more responsive. And then once you're accelerating like hard, zero to 60, that's when the shifts are really sharp and sporty. However, lift off the throttle and you'll experience a lot of lurching. This is the kind of car where your passenger's head will serve as a very clear barometer of how well you're controlling the throttle. It's just somewhat like a manual transmission in how lurchy it is. 
Now, because this one has the dynamic handling package, we actually get the M Sport brakes from the M240i. And I have to say, while they are powerful, they're a little bit spongy and grabby. Handling is what you'd expect from a two series with two doors. It's very balanced out on the open road. There's not a lot of nose diving or bottoming out over deep undulations in the pavement, but there is a noticeable amount of body roll, which I guess surprises me a little bit, but it's likely due to the added weight of the car. Now, remember the 230i is still rear wheel drive only at the moment, but the dynamics are very appropriate and they feel nimble around town, much lighter and more tossable than the M240i with its all-wheel drive system. This car also has the M Sport differential out back, which sends the appropriate amount of torque to either right or left wheel, and it does a very good job, along with the Pirelli P0 tires, at keeping this car hooked to the ground. The ride is impressively tuned thanks to this M Sport suspension that this particular model has. It doesn't have any adaptive damping, but I don't necessarily think it needs it. The ride is sporty but smooth, gliding over the pavement without serving any unnecessarily harshness. Sharp bumps that I'm used to around here are not nearly as pronounced as I'm used to them being, and I actually have to say that this is one of the crowning achievements of this car. The McPherson front suspension is perfect for the agenda of a 230i, while the independent multi-link rear suspension does a really good job at keeping everything out back in check like a proper luxury coupe. Cabin noise at 50 miles per hour was clocked in at as low as 73 decibels, but it was averaging closer to around 79. You'll definitely hear some road noise due to the low profile tires, but remind yourself, this is not a 7 Series. It's not supposed to be an isolation chamber. It's their entry level models. As always, fuel economy varies, but I was only able to manage 27 miles per gallon combined in my week of driving this car. Remember, it's a 3,500 pound two-door with a four-cylinder engine, so there's only so much you can do there, but I did not hit the EPA marks. The 230i is a very back-to-basics BMW experience in a package that forgoes the brand's more divisive new front-end styling. If you don't need more than two doors and you don't need the all-out power you get from an M240i, then the 230i represents a very good value that is still fun to drive, and it's in a very shrinking segment. So if you want a two-door, this is an excellent choice. And don't get me wrong, we're very excited to see the next M2, but we'll save that for a later date. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as the Auto Buyer's Guide podcast, EV Buyer's Guide, and the Alex on Autos website. Till next time, take care.